Hello, beloved animals. Welcome to this week's animal meditation. And wow, do you have something special coming your way? <laughs> so this morning I pulled two cards because the first card I pulled is the zebra. Whoops, the light's a little funky. There we go. So the Zebra is an animal that has actually already come forward. It came in July and there's a meditation up on YouTube or if you scroll down my Facebook, I think I think I was starting to do the Facebook lives then, um, but if not, it's definitely on YouTube. And so yeah, the zebra came forward and um, so what I take that to be an indication of is that it's wanting to come into the moment again and it's, uh, its message is, um, you know, really around this like playfulness and enjoying life and savoring the, the sweetness of, of community. And so check out that meditation if you haven't already or if you want to visit it again. And um, so, yeah, so I, I pulled that and I was like, okay, awesome. I'll make mention of Zebra. And then I pulled the second card for this week and it was the dragon. Hi Miles, hi Tom, good to see you guys. Hi Sharon. <laughs> so, um, wow, what to say about the dragon? I mean, this animal has been really present in my life the last few months and it wasn't up until that point. It wasn't really an energy that I had ever thought to connect with. It is, if you notice, the, the circle on the top of this card is an indication in this deck that this is an animal that is in the spirit realm. So all of the animals have um, elements associated with them in this particular deck that I use. And uh, so the ones that have come up, um, uh, the cosmic egg recently, and um, I think, did we do sea serpent yet? I pulled sea serpent earlier this week. Um, unicorn is in there, the golden egg. Um, so there are seven animals that run all of the chakras. And um, the dragon in, in this style is associated with the third chakra. So, um, yeah, so there's that piece, kind of like what this particular deck makes of dragon, and then there's my own experience that I want to share a bit a bit deeper this week. And so this will be a little bit of a longer uh, video, a live, live stream. And um, so, uh, you know, stay with me if you can. If not, you're welcome to come come check it out later. But I'd love to kind of go on, go on a little bit of a deeper journey today with this one. So... I'll start by saying that uh, the, the dragon energy has so many um, layers to it and it, there is this long history um, on earth of, of our relationship, human relationship with dragons. And you'll see that it's a, a, alive and very present uh, if you just look around and start opening your eyes to dragons. You'll, you'll start seeing them everywhere. We use them as a symbol, as, um, you know, in toys and entertainment. Um, they're, they're, like, really common. And as an archetypal energy, if you just start to, I invite you, you know, this week to look for dragons, they're everywhere. And so why, why is that, that we're so, we like resonate with this energy so much that we continue to, um, you know, display it, create it. It's like in, it's in our art culture, it's in um, you know, I'm wearing a necklace, my dragon necklace. It's, you know, something that you'll, that you'll find symbolized everywhere. And, um, I keep having a pop up that my storage is full. So if I'm hitting the screen, that's why I need to clear some pictures on my phone. Um, so, so yeah, so this energy is, uh, so powerful and, 
And I think that's why we're so drawn to it. We're so, you know, wanting to maintain that memory of it. And it, um, it also represents, you know, there's a lot around kind of our, our own fear, our own shadow and the way that, you know, if you just, just take like one segment of culture and the entertainment, you know, all the kind of movies and things made about dragons, um, there's, you know, this real, uh, kind of like good and evil thing that we portray in dragons either dragons are like totally benevolent and amazing and like helping uh people out or they're just like these vicious like really kind of crazy um unkind beings and so how is that a reflection of of ourselves and how how do we want to be in relationship to those sides of uh, of ourselves individually you know, that we contain these aspects of connection and disconnection or, you know, light and shadow, all the words that we could use for, for that. And um, hi, Anne Susa. So good to see your name. So I'm going to share a, um, a story that came through after a plant medicine ceremony in July. And I actually, um, I actually pulled the dragon card going into that journey and uh, really um, was able to, with the, um, with the support of the, the um, man holding that circle, um, really go deeply into an encounter with, um, with dragon energy. And so this, is, this was channeled um, through that experience and I wrote it down after. Um, so I'm just going to read it to you. So this is sort of like story time, Sunday story time. And then we'll move into the regular meditation. This is what I know to be true. A long time ago, dragons were just as real as you, as me, as your pet dog or cat. They lived all over the world in caves and the forest, and in high up places where they could see all of creation. The dragons, like humans, were part of this earth and part of the stars. Their intelligence was honored. They were the epitome of grace. And their love healed. They held the ancient codes of dignity and honor, sacred touch, and expression of divine love. Men and women in the villages near dragons spent time with them. The dragons were, after all, the original encyclopedias. Way before Google, that was where you went to deepen your knowledge of the ancient codes as well as learn the languages of plants and animals and all kinds of medicine. Come here, buddy. With the dragons, you came to know yourself as part of nature. Since they lived a very long time, many generations in a family lineage would grow up knowing the same dragon. An ancestral trust was cultivated. Grandmothers would bring grandsons to meet the dragons. And when the children were playing in the meadow and a dragon flew overhead, they ran to tell their mom and dad because it was a good omen. It's like when we see an eagle. It was recognized to be precious. As Earth grew older and things shifted in the galaxies, Darker energies started to notice us. They descended here and gravi gravity became heavier. And some of the people started to forget. Some of the dragons started to forget too. They forgot their divinity. They forgot they were angels. Violence increased as Dragons and humans explored their shadow sides. 
Some became more aligned with the reptilian qualities of coldness and lost connection with their hearts. For some, a small taste of greed was all it took to send them into battles over treasures and land. Many humans and dragons stayed in the light. During this time, they stood for truth and peace. They aligned against fear and remembered the power of love. But some things must cycle, as the earth knows each winter when death comes. The breathing in and out vibrational quality of our ecosystems teaches us this. And so many men and many dragons on the side of light simply became old and died. Meanwhile, after a long time of fighting, the last greedy dragon was slayed. The age of the dragons came to an end. This is very sad, especially for us humans. Because with the final breath of that last dragon, we began to forget very quickly many aspects of our being. We forgot how to be in relationship with the life around us. We forgot how expansive our love could be. We forgot that we ourselves are made of pure love. So feel your sadness and honor the tragedy. And remember what else is true. The dragons died in our dimension, in the physical place we find ourselves in. But they did not die everywhere. Dragons are very much alive within us. We can even remember their language if we tune in and very quietly listen. We can remember how to see them, how to feel them, and how to attune to the healing they offer us. We can study and remember their names, their attributes, their colors. We can cultivate very intimate relationships with them. In this way, we tend the flames of life for dragons. We help them awaken as they help us awaken. We honor their strength, how they have the toughest scales, the most protection because their dragon hearts are so sensitive that the slightest breath will destroy them. And so I implore you, Remember your heart is just as sensitive and your scales are just as strong. Remember, you can stand in your divinity in alignment with nature and in humble service to these exquisite beings. Remember your brothers and sisters, the dragons. Thank you for listening to that story. And so we're just going to move from that space of that story right into the meditation right now. So go ahead and lower your eyes and come into your breath. And bring your awareness into your heart right now. Just feel yourself drawing down and connecting with whatever is happening in your chest in this moment, whatever's going on over here. And 
want you to feel this ability that you have to connect deeply with dragon energy, just like all the other animals. And let your heart sink into that, that remembering for a moment that you have this superpower. And so feel yourself at the opening of a cave. You can picture what it's like around you and picture that cave door in front of you, that opening into the earth. And you can sense that there is a living, breathing, loving dragon that awaits you in the cave. You can feel that pull of your heart wanting to go in and make contact. And simultaneously, you may notice a part of you that doesn't want to go in the cave. Maybe some fear comes up or some question of whether you can really do it. Whatever it is, just take a moment and tune in and just sort of invite in both aspects of yourself right now. Invite in your knowing of the part of you that doesn't want to go in. What is that exactly? How can you name that or, or put words to that? Leon is making dragon sounds for us. <laughs> oh, puppy. <laughs> and so with that knowing that you have of not just the part of you that maybe contains a little fear or a little doubt or a little shame, like whatever that looks like, that there's also this part of you that really desires to go in. You're like, you're ready. You want to make contact. So feel that part and really, you know, come into contact with the part of yourself that's like in. Leon, come on, dude. <laughs> Sit. Thank you. Come on. Here you go. Thank you. <sighs> and so at the opening of this cave now, holding both these parts of yourself and just honoring them both. Just being with what is that these connected and disconnected aspects of you are part of your human experience. They're, they're, they can be loved. They're completely okay. There's nothing wrong with any of it. And now the, the moment has arrived. It's right here in front of you. Are you willing to take that first step to enter the cave and then the step after it and then the next step and walk forward in to meet this dragon? Are you willing to do that right now?
And so feel yourself moving into the cave. Let your desire carry you to make contact and be with this energy closer. And as you enter the cave, what do you, what do you notice there? What do you see around you? And as you come closer to the energy of the dragon, you start to make out an outline, a shape, a very large shape containing the energies of the snake and the eagle and the panther, and you feel the swirl around you, this power, this love, this connection. As you come closer, what does your dragon look like? How does it welcome you into the cave? And as you approach this one, you may feel some feelings. You may have been disconnected from this energy for a long time. And so allow yourself to feel whatever may come up in this moment. And if there's anything that you want to express to the dragon, you can take a minute now to just feel like what is the message that your heart holds for this energy, for this animal? What do you want to say to your dragon? And you may have a question that you'd like to ask this energy. And just feel in, is there anything that your heart longs to ask the dragon? And then you can listen for a reply or a message. You can, if you didn't have a question, you can just be open. What is the dragon's message to you? Or what is its reply to your question? What information wants to flow back to you? And if you're in, in question about this part, like, did I hear a message or I don't know, I didn't hear anything, like, what, what is this? You know, then just sort of come back, bring your attention back into your heart and you can just be still for a moment and even just notice, like, what you might feel in your body or what emotion you may feel, or if there's anything at all that comes to mind.
And so how would you like to close with your dragon? What, what final message would you like to say? Or is there a gesture or a gift you'd like to give your dragon? Like, what does that look like for you? You can, you can do anything. It's your, it's your journey. It's your vision. So how would you like to connect in closing with your dragon? And so feel yourself starting to move out of the cave space back into the sunlight. And knowing that you always have access to this place. It's, it's within you. And the dragon is within you. And this energy just so desires to support us. So when you're ready, you can wiggle your fingers and your toes and come back into the room. And thank you <laughs> for going on this journey. <laughs> I apologize if Liam was distracting at all. <laughs> I thought I'd shy out letting him be in here during this, but he's not in his napping space like usual. <laughs> he's a little more active, so it's interesting. So, hmm. I want to really thank you and honor you for choosing to go into this space with, with the dragon and explore it. And there's something to tuck away, some information for you to um, tuck away and, and consider. <laughs> um... <laughs> And that is in February, there is going to be the dragon training at our home in Santa Barbara. Come here, buddy. I know you're making quite the appearance today. And uh, this training was visioned by um, a man who has been... Um, involved in the Mankind Project for a long time and there are other um, Mankind Project men that facilitate as well as um, some uh, shadow work facilitators. Leon, <laughs> come on. And uh, so, and I'm actually going to be joining um, the staff of it um, and, uh, and helping with the next one. So this is the training that I attended back in August in Minnesota, and it's coming to California. It's going to be really amazing. And um, I would invite anyone who has, uh, it's, it's a training that requires um, like prerequisite uh, work, either a shadow work weekend, which are open to everyone, or Priestess Path, Women in Power, Women Within, which are women's programs, or the Mankind Project, which is the men's initiation um, weekends that happen all over, all over the country. So if you've done any of those programs, or if you want to come to the Dragon Training, you can do one of those weekends and then come. And it's very deep work. It's, um, you know, an incredible program that they've put together and 
it's like a three-day weekend and then 120 days following where you're in a small group and you're really working towards something that wants to come through you and this is the this is the dragon energy it really is there is this like creation energy in that fire within us that wants to be expressed in in um, you know uh, like creating like what is that passion so if you this is just a little teaser I'm gonna be posting more about this as we come closer but if you tuned into this and you want to consider maybe attending that weekend uh, shoot me a little private message um, right now and let me know that you're curious about it and we can hop on the phone and I can share a bit more so just a little preview for that and uh, yeah thank you so much I feel all of your hearts and it's good to spend a little time to go a little deeper with this totem like I said it's been really significant in my life these last few months so I'm happy to be able to share that story and the journey and um, lots of love to all of you thank you thank you Mwah. have a wonderful rest of your Sunday